Hi, my name is Nate Berkepeck. I'm the maintainer of Puma, which is a popular open source Ruby library. And I want to talk today about how to get involved with any open source project and immediately start contributing to it the same way a maintainer would. So not just writing code, but managing issues uh, and providing feedback on pull requests. And this is really easy. Uh, you don't need that much experience with the project. Uh, you just need to know what to look for and what is useful to help out the maintainer. So uh, I'm going to look at my own project because I actually know and understand the issues and pull requests on this project. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just uh, actually show you what I do as the maintainer of Puma to show you how you can do it. So if I look at my first pull request in the list here, uh, I'm going to go back to the oldest one in the list. So this pull request is trying to add a feature uh, and they're saying, all right, so we want to, you know, use this new uh, API that is provided by a third party instead of the old one. And that makes things a little bit nicer for us. So if you, well, the first thing I do is I, I go through and I read the whole issue to say, okay, you got to go back and say, all right, well, what are some of the other things that have, uh, the other issues and pull requests that have come before this? Uh, what is this pull request trying to do? And then I'll read the code. In this case, it's actually very simple with some uh, test changes. It's about 40, uh, 12 lines. Read the code, read the issues, uh, link to read the comments, just figure out what's going on. And then once you're done with that, figure out where you're at at the end. So where is this pull request at right now? What's What's the next thing that has to be done? Because what's so often the case for stalled pull requests and the reason why uh, they don't get merged and they just sit there for years at a time is because no one knows what to do next. No one knows whose problem it is. So is it the, are we waiting on the maintainer to say something, to give us some kind of decision? Are we waiting on uh, the pull requester to change something about the code? Uh, it's just clarifying that next step is about half of what I do as a maintainer is just walking into pull requests and issues and saying, what needs to be done next here? So in this case, what I decided, uh, if you go down to the end, my last comment, I figured out the test didn't actually do anything. So a common problem is that people write tests that then don't actually test anything. So we're gonna write a test for our new piece of code on the pull request, right? If that test passes on the master branch with no code changes, so what I do is I literally just will copy paste the test changes into the master branch and just run it. Uh, you could do some fancy stuff with Git maybe to like actually do that a little bit easier for you. Um, I'll just run that test. And then if it passes on master, well, we have a problem because then you didn't actually the, the test was never read, right? Red, green, refactor. The test was never read in the first place. So in this case, the test, I figured out the test was never read. Uh, so I left that comment and said, hey, uh, you know, this test doesn't actually work. So at this point, it's now the pull requester's problem to fix the test. So we have some more back and forth about it, some suggestions about how to fix the test. And that's where we're at right now. So. That was in November. It is now February. So that's like three months later. Um, so I'm just going to leave a comment here. And let's, I mean, this is in the pull requester's hands, but I want to look at it and say, well, how can we be more helpful? Is there some way I can sort of help the pull requester along and say, hey, you know, this is still waiting on you, but say it in a nice way and say it in a way that actually maybe kind of helps them down the road. So, um, the original implementation of uh, this test was never read. Completely right. I don't even know what happened. So this person does not know how to write a proper test. Okay, so that's that should be our clue here is this pull request is blocked because the pull requester doesn't know how to write a good test for it. And they left it open and they were still here. So somebody left a comment after that that was helpful said, I think the test needs to test with a bundle underscore environment variable. And I said, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure I tested that, but now I can't remember. So I think I'll say, uh, whoops, what's this guy's name? 71M. So 
I'm going to say at 71M, did you see Dan Targ's comment? Uh, it's possible that would help get this test working correctly. And then I'll say, um, I'll, I'll kind of sum up where we're at here. We need a test that's red. That's not, well, I'll say, I'll say not passing on master for this to work. Um, and I think that's good. Um, someone else also uh, linked uh, another issue here which is people are having problems which may be solved by this pull request um, with sort of a problem with restarting. And someone has mentioned that. Um, so I'm gonna say maybe 2000, that issue would help us go in the right direction. Okay, and I'll leave that comment again. So just a friendly reminder, I think probably in open source, you know, we all work for free. So no one's here on a deadline, uh, but I think it's reasonable to kind of uh, push people and say, hey, where are you at every 30 days or so? Um, you know, I kind of left this one out there. Uh, I, I use actually use a, a label on my uh, pull requests in my project as well. Let's say waiting blocked, which means I'm waiting on the pull requester to do something. Um, some people close pull requests when they're kind of in this state for a long amount of time. Um, we don't have that many in Puma, so I don't really do that. So just to recap, here's what I did. Looked at the pull request, read the issue, um, read any related issues, and then tried to figure out where is this pull request at right now? What needs to be done next? to get this pull request into a mergeable state. Um, nowadays, actually on Puma, what I do is I actually have a checklist that's on our pull request template, which lists several of the things that I think you need to submit in a pull request to make it mergeable. And this is gonna be different project by project, but for us, you have to review the contributing guidelines, you have to add an entry to our history file. You have to add tests. So that's a pretty frequent pull request problem is people uh, submit pull requests without tests. And literally it is actually helpful because the maintainer then doesn't have to do it. If there's a pull request that doesn't have tests and you, this project has tests, just leave a comment and say, hey, this is a great pull request, uh, needs a test. <laughs> That's super helpful, actually, because then I don't have to do it. My pull request is 100 lines or less. This is something I've added in Puma where I want pull requests to be short. This pull request doesn't need tests, then I add CI skip so the CI doesn't run. I've added closes issue to the PR description of my, of my commit messages. I've updated documentation and all tests actually pass. So these are all things that you could check on any pull request in any, uh, in any project. Does, does it have tests? Do those tests actually run on the CI and pass? If they don't have CI, pull down the pull request yourself and then run the tests. Do they pass? Uh, did, they, did they update documentation? So looking at the uh, files changed, maintainers are often doing code review. Just because maintainers do code review doesn't mean you can do code review or you can't do code review. Um, so all the things you would do to do uh, a code review for a coworker on, on, in your, uh, at, your, at your place of work, you can do that on a pull request, even if you're not the maintainer. It is super helpful because the maintainer will have to do this anyway. So if you can do a first pass and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm glad that you simplified this URL parsing, but uh, I don't get it. Can you add some documentation here about why you did such and such? Super helpful, super helpful that you're basically being the maintainer without the maintainer having to do anything. And if you do this kind of thing enough, eventually you'll be asked to maintain the project. So if that's your goal, uh, this is a great way to do it.
you're basically being a maintainer without using having the big green you know merge button that I have on Puma. Okay, so I'm going to go look at another project now and run through this process uh, with a project that I've never seen before and see if I can uh, say anything helpful about it. So I'm going to hit Explore and I'm going to go to Ruby so I can actually understand what the heck's going on. Um, this is all my, my Kerbal Space Program stuff. Let's see if I can quickly. Uh, I guess if I look at the Ruby topic. Yeah, so topics Ruby, will that work? And I'm just gonna grab a random Ruby language repository, not Rails, because I know how Rails works. Um, eh, Discourse is probably a weird one. I don't, I don't know, Fastlane, whatever this is. Let's just do that. Looks like it's a tool for iOS and Android developers. Okay, so this is not Ruby, but let's go for it anyway. There's probably Ruby in here somewhere, but let's look at a pull request. Oh yeah, so there's some Ruby. All right, let's look at a pull request and just try to review it and using the process that I just talked about. I'm gonna pick this first one just because this person hasn't even gotten a, a comment on it yet. So it's kind of a fresh pull request. So already on here, this project has a checklist about whether or not the test pass. This person says they've done it and the CI has passed. So I'm gonna say the tests probably actually do pass for this. So I'm not gonna run the test myself. You follow the fast lane code style guide and run bubble, bundle exec rubicop a to ensure the code style is valid. One thing that would be interesting to know is whether or not their test setup actually runs bundle exec rubicop for them. Um, our projects do that. Uh, some projects might not. They've read the computation guide. Okay, so they didn't update documentation if necessary. So one of the things I can do here is say, does this pull request actually need documentation or not? Uh, that's going to be one of the things I'm looking for when I look at the code. Okay. The pasteboard shirt and simulator can cause issues during UI tests. This PR disables pasteboard automatic sync on a system level for all launch simulators. I don't know what any of that means, but I'm just going to look at the code and make sure it actually does that. I choose to implement this in this module for two reasons. That's fine. Testing steps. Okay. So one thing I could do that would be actually useful would be to run this testing, these testing steps. These are probably not in the automated tests based on the way that they wrote this. So me actually downloading this, running these testing steps and saying, I ran the testing steps in the PR and this, and it worked. It did what it said it was supposed to. Leave that comment, maintainer doesn't have to do it. So good, please do that. Okay, let's look at the code. Coming first responder can trigger pasteboard sync. So actually, I mean, that's a pretty good code comment. I like that, uh, you know, to say why we're doing this. UI not verbose. Uh, I I'm not sure if this project is using a particular doc style. Uh, let's look at the file itself. So, oh, not that, not that file. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at like a file that's just in the project and see if there's any kind of doc style. Like, do they use R doc? No. So I think the documentation here is probably good. Um, there's really no, uh, this is not really intended to be called publicly. So in my opinion, it doesn't need to be formally documented. Uh, again, I don't even know if this project has like a formal documentation format. I can't, I didn't look very hard, but I don't, I don't see one. So I think the docs on this are okay. Um, it le they left a comment saying why this change was made. It seems like a reasonable thing to do here. Like the, the, the way they've done this with require relative, I really don't have any comments about that. And then just reading the code here. One thing with, with that happens a lot is people misspell things in comments. So even just looking for spelling errors. And this all seems totally reasonable. So I have no feedback on the code here either. Like there's nothing crazy going on. Yep, that looks good. So uh, at this point, 
I would say whether or not you decide to say if there's any docs necessary, um, not really necessary. Um, I think what I would do would just be to hit review changes and then leave a comment and say, um, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think the comment about, uh, I think the comment in shared paceboard.rb was very help was helpful. This doesn't really need any more docs. Um, and hit submit review. And then that shows up in there. And then now the maintainer knows, hey, someone else actually looked at this and thought it wasn't crazy. So that's very helpful to know. Um, that's the kind of thing I would love to see more of in Puma. Uh, it's the kind of thing every maintainer I think would love to see more of. So that's how to get started maintaining a project without having maintainer rights. How to read pull requests and review them and help the uh, help the project along.